The scenic beauty of eastern Washington belies one of its greatest challenges. This region sometimes gets as little as six inches of rain a year. That's why scientists have spent nearly a century coming up with new ways to help wheat farmers grow healthy crops with very little moisture. This vast landscape of gray skies and steady winds may suggest a place blessed by abundant rain. But this cloudy June day in eastern Washington is misleading. Farmer Ron Jaray, whose family's been working this land since 1884, says each season they plant and pray the heavens will provide enough moisture to sustain their winter wheat. It comes only in the winter. Uh, it's not reliable as far as how much we're going to get each winter, but a lot of these crops like some moisture in the spring, and it's been known to stop raining and any kind of precipitation it's from February on. It makes it kind of difficult. With rainfall so scarce, the prospect of a disappointing harvest and financial distress has always been part of life for these dryland farmers. But in 1915, Washington State University began researching ways to coax more abundance from this parched and dusty soil. It created the Dry Land Research Station, laboratories, machine shops for new farm inventions, and more than 1,300 acres of land for experimental planting. I like being able to think I'm doing something useful. Bill Schillinger is a scientist, professor, and the director of the station. Are we operating in isolation? In a way, yes, because no one else has such unique environments. We're in a winter rainfall region with dry summers. The circle I work in is first, let's keep the soil from blowing, so we need conservation soil management. Preventing erosion and conserving precious topsoil does more than help farmers grow bigger crops. As Bill showed me, it keeps the air cleaner for the rest of us. You know, take a stable clod, it doesn't take much to pulverize it. And then when you pulverize it and it goes in the air. Nothing know, but dust. And uh, uh, the stuff you can't see is still in the air. Whenever there's a dust storm, whenever there's an uh, exceedance of the federal air standard, it's always, always associated with high wind events and blowing dust from agricultural fields. And so researchers and wheat growers fess up. So that's what we really want to stop. In the past, farmers here grew only winter wheat, planted in the fall, harvested in the summer. That meant fields lying bare or fallow often for months. With dry land research help, farmers are trying new crop rotations to reduce dangerous dust. And they're assisting with test plots like these on Ron Jure's farm. This, all in addition to no-till farming, where crop residue from the last harvest is left on the ground. So this is the original boot that was on the machine? Uh, correct. Yeah. Bruce Sauer, zero, zero, another zero. station researcher, is modifying this planting machine to better penetrate the extra surface debris. And hopefully be able to see deeper, yeah, so the since seed, we're going to make a better furrow. The seed will go in here, come out here, and you're hoping on this prototype that it will uh, yeah. be planted deeper. Correct. I think everybody needs to have bottom line that's profitable. And you don't want to see the ground move. I mean, none of us want to see the ground move because there's somebody coming up behind us to take care of it when we're done. Back at the lab, researchers are planting wheat seedlings eight inches deep in pots of hard, compacted soil. Right now, the methodology that we have established, we're very confident, is very close to what farmers uh, experience when they're seeding in the field. Researcher Steve Schofstall has learned that even with much needed rain, timing is important. Coming at the wrong time, the rain can adversely affect seedlings approaching the surface. If a rain comes and rains on top of the soil surface, it can create a soil crusting, mm -hmm. which makes it difficult for the seedlings to emerge through that crust. It'll continue to grow, but it can't break through that crust, so what happens is it kind of accordions like this, and after a while, it'll just die. Yeah. Just, you know, amazing how they'll come up through that. Yeah. Wheat is nearly a $1 billion industry in Washington. 
its third biggest crop behind apples and dairy products. And up to 90% of Washington wheat growers are completely dependent on rainfall. For Bill and his team, it's a big responsibility, improving crops and air quality. But the payoff is work that not only sustains vital production, but ultimately keeps prices down on a vast array of consumer products. It sounds corny, but I really am passionate about my job and it's great to get paid to do what I'm passionate about. We work with progressive farmers who feel the same way and are leading the pack and that's how we're going to make it happen.